Everybody, it's Tyler here at Northeast Wisconsin St. Gervais checking in. 3134R Ranger coming in out of California. SEAM already has an event win, excellence award, and uh, also skills award too so far. So congratulations on some great success this year. And they're doing really good here too. Currently number one seed as we're filming this, coming into our last break as well too. Ranger has a lot of great things going on with this robot. Uh, they're able to do a uh, seven uh, ring auto and get that win point as well too. So a lot of great stuff going on with that, but mechanically very sound as well too. Be going through a couple rush mechanisms that they're utilizing on this robot, a great full overview, and a lot of other just little intricate things I want you to pay attention to as we dive more into this. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash vex. Drupal, let's uh, overview this robot a bit more, talk to you about how it all came together and some big highlights you want to cover. Yeah, to start, we can start with the 450M RPM drive base with the six motors. So we found this R with we found this drive base to have more torque and more speed um, that is necessary for gameplay. So basically, we rush positive corners really fast at the start of the match, which guarantees us that positive corner and that bonus. And then next, we can move on to our 600 RPM intake, which we found to be optimal for speed and scoring efficiency, along with this bigger sprocket at the top, which is actually newer um, a, a newer design that most teams started switching to because of the increased torque while scoring on the flaps that have friction on the mobile goals. Additionally, we also use a ladybound mechanism, which is also a wall stake mechanism, and a mobile goal tipper, which runs at 66 RPM with a rotation sensor to measure its precise uh, position relative to the robot. And we have tip and untip capability. So I don't know if we can tip on this table exactly. Uh, we can untip the goals. And then that allows us to actually untip the goals that our opponents think are safe when they tip it during the match play. And at the last 15 seconds, ensure it goes into the negative corner as fast as possible without giving our opponents enough time to react to that situation. So how quickly are you uh, doing the untips? Like how long does it actually take you to line up, get the goal untip, that sort of thing? So as long as it's not near the hang, the bars, the hang bars, we are able to untip right like extremely fast. Within five seconds, if I see a goal untipped, I can go right behind it and just pull it, pull my arm down. And essentially that gives us the ability to do that in the last 15 seconds as we play wall stakes in our strategy until then. Yeah, I love that strat overall. Akshav, let's talk more about uh, on your color sensor. We were talking earlier, you're actually doing color uh, sensing kind of two different ways based on the uh, velocity of the rings coming in. So talk to me more about that. Uh-huh. So a lot of teams like or color sort has become more standard or common among a lot of different, like really competitive teams. I'll show you the wall. But the standard way to like color sort rings is to leave the ring at the very top. Like once the intake is going really fast, and leave the ring at the top so it starts flying up because of the momentum on the ring. But this doesn't work when the ring just has less momentum because there's multiple rings in your intake, and your intake is slowed down because of that. So instead, what we do is we use we like redirect the ring, which and this works much better at lower velocities on the intake. So I can probably demonstrate that actually. Yeah. So like, so when it's just one ring, it has enough velocity to color sort at the top. But if there isn't, we color sort using the redirect mechanism. I love that because you look at you know the redirect right. That was such a really meta for so many teams, but to get into their ring scoring or to uh, on the stakes, so really cool to see that you implemented yeah. a different route yeah. of doing something like that. Actually, our first bot was a redirect back, so it kind of gave us the idea when we realized these flaps work in a similar method. Very cool. Nandu, talk to me about these uh, different rush mechanisms. Yeah, we got both a ring and a goal rush. So. Uh, because the matches are very low, low scoring, the 12 point swing we get from Auton is like very valuable. So we developed uh, two rush mechs for, especially during elims, that we can utilize to disrupt other people's Autons and also get, give us an upper hand. So starting with our ring, ring rush, we have two standoffs that have a one-way lock. And then as we drive forward into that four stack, 
it pushes this for it pushes it forward, locking them in place, and it, they basically can come out. And then we pull away, and then we continue our auton. Yeah. Okay. So then we push these two forward, and then we pull these two back. And then moving on to our uh, our goal rush. Uh, like on the back. So there's this screw underneath that goes underneath the th uh, the underneath the goal, and then as we activate the piston, it lifts it up and then we can pull back, preventing other people from deadlocking the goal as well. When did you come up with that, of actually having the mobile goal lifted up? Uh, this was actually a recent addition we had when we saw that Autom was very important, and then we, we basically researched around, and we saw this was the most like ideal and efficient way to get the goal. Sean, Jay, let's talk about the uh, passive hang on your robot as well. And I know we talked a little bit about that uh, locking clamp, but I'd love to hear more about it too. So with the hang, we decided to make it passive because we saw the actuation of our Lady Brown mechanism, and we realized that we can easily just adjust. We can just adjust the hang for it. So the way it works is we we bring down the Lady Brown, and then we just drive straight into the hang, the hang bar, and then uh, it barely lifts us off the ground enough to get that level one three points, right? So one thing about our locking clamp that is that we have this auto line feature. So pretty much any it's for driver, it's for driver usability. So anytime our driver just uh, he can just drive straight into a mo mobile goal, and then it'll auto align. And has that changed much for you throughout the year, or has that been something you've had for a while? Actually, we had a previous iteration of the design where it was uh, dual pistons, and we had it uh, connected to two C channels around this area. But then the problem with that is that it wasn't very tight, and um, we ended up losing the clamp a lot. So then we end, so we ended up choosing a different design with adjust with like these standoffs on the bottom, so it's, it, it had easier adjustability and allowed for a tighter fit. Start Let's talk uh, more about some of your mass strategies as well, too. And one thing I really love to hear about is this uh, solo win point, how you're uh, accomplishing this, uh, and what some of the strategy looks like behind it. And I also noticed you got in the background, uh, you guys are using uh, Fusion 360 as well, too. So tell me more about uh, everything that goes into it. Yeah. Uh, speaking about our CAD, like you can look at it here. Uh, last season, we didn't actually CAD any of our robots as well. We were pretty much free, free building all of over under. It just took a lot longer to come up with like designs, iterating through things faster. And it's, like me and Druva can work together, like online CADing together on a call. Like we just like realized, like this uh, top, uh, like you can see like the top of the gear. This is like exactly at 16.2 inches. It sits right under the bar, so we can maximize the vertical, like how high this scores. So just making scoring like faster and more efficient. And uh, going more into game strategy, like Nandu was saying earlier, in over under scores were like around 200, 300 points for like a, like high scoring matches. But like here, like uh, this season in high stakes, uh, like higher scoring matches are around like 40, 50 points. So that uh, prior and Auton being a 12 point swing, six point bonus, uh, we had to like, prioritize Auton a bunch this season. We have Odon wheels and a lot of like uh, mechs in place to make Autons as consistent and as fast as possible. That's why we went for a faster drivetrain as well. So. Uh, one thing about our ring rush that Nandu didn't cover is it actually knocks. So there's a four stack here and R2, like say like this red ring was our alliance, our alliance color as well. As the ring rush drives in like super fast, it pushes our uh, our our rings onto a lion side, putting it like, at a place where mo like a lot of the times it either disrupts our opponent's auton because this ring is just in the way or they intake our auton if they don't have color sword that just gives us a top ring bonus or just more advantageous for us because their auton messes up. And one thing about the goal rush uh, mechanism, like if you want to open the sweeper, tilt like that tilt as well that you mentioned earlier, that tilt makes it for other teams with this passive type of hang or passive like lock, it doesn't get under because most of the times we reach that goal just so much faster than them. I think we're also on low air right now. It normally tilts like about here. And then uh, even for like the top down style of rings, they don't really have much of a lip to grab. Like it also like it pretty it's like a, still another structural lock it's like hard it, most of the times uh, we just deadlock on that goal and one thing about that is we actually have it in our code like a 15 second timeout because we realized after one of our tournaments we ran a goal rush against like another fast team uh, or another super fast team uh, we realized that like we had like a regular like timeout or whatever he does for his timeouts but we realized that uh, deadlocking on that goal uh, on that neutral goal is more important because a lot of the times our opponents don't have a, a 15 second timeout or like they have like their Auton like would normally uh, leave that mobile goal and our Odom would recorrect for everything. Yeah. Overall, there's a lot of next level conversations going on here and I think, you know, your guys' number one seat so far is definitely well earned. You're watching on the field, very complete package that's mm -hmm. gone to it. So tons of stuff I think teams can learn from this. And you guys have been pretty open on releasing some of your stuff already too, yeah. which I think is fantastic. So three one three four our Ranger, best of luck here at this event. Uh, but we can't wait to hopefully continue to see you throughout the season as well too. Good luck the rest cool. of the way. Thank you so much. 
True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash vex. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.